Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Uh, you know, we always harp on being in the right market, the right sector, and then picking the right company. And I'm super excited today because we really do have the trifecta here. Uh, you know, as an aside, one question, if there's an overriding question we have is, what is going on in the market? Nobody can understand it. But the one sector that I think people do have a more of a handle on is the precious metal space. People understand that it's always been, gold has always been a store of value. You can look, touch, and feel it, and so forth and so on. And not surprising, the sector has been doing very well. But then even diving in a little bit more is where to be in that sector. And with us today, we have a West African Gold Explorer Predictive Discovery and their managing director, Paul Robert. Friends, welcome. Let's all welcome Paul. Paul, welcome to 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Greg. Nice to be here. Excellent, excellent. You know, Paul, we always want to start with someone's background. You know, how did you get from, you know, grade school to where you are today? Uh, you know, everyone has a story, and I'm sure you have an interesting story. Can you just please share it with us, please? Right, well, going very, right to the beginning of the predictive story, or rather to, of my story, uh, is that uh, I started off actually studying mining engineering. And I decided after a little while of doing mining engineering that it really wasn't the thing for me, and I wanted to have more of that kind of outdoor life that you get with geology, so I switched to geology. Um, and then after that, well, I've done a lot of things in a lot of places. Right. So, you know, I, I've, I've worked uh, in Australia a lot, I've worked in South America, um, and obviously, I've had uh, over a decade in West Africa. Um, and, but along the, along the way, it's been mostly exploration. Uh, there's been some mine geology. Uh, there's been a whole spectrum, if you like, of, of, um, uh, of exploration that you can have from the very grassroots uh, through to doing feasibility studies. Um, and then I did actually spend a bit of time, and it's really the genesis of predictive, uh, working in research. So I actually ran a research group in CSIRO, Australia's National Research Agency. Um, and from that, and there's a complicated story that I won't bore the listeners with, from that predictive discovery emerged. And there is a technological background uh, to us. And part of our DNA comes from the fact um, that I and, and my colleague Barry Murphy worked, worked on that same research project. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's incredible. You know, I, I must say it's very rare to speak to, to an MD that is actually a researcher by trade. And, you know, I, I suppose, you know, that's a great segue into your project and your experience. Um, West Africa, for those viewers that don't know, has been probably one of the most prolific gold areas uh, of discovery over the last, I'd say, 10 to 15 years, Paul. Um, how do you think that your background and your, your thought processes has assisted you uh, uh, in West Africa. And also maybe can you just share for our listeners that are not as familiar with that region, why it is so exciting? Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, firstly, I, I would say that I'm not really a researcher by trade exactly, but I have been involved in research for a while. Um, okay. And certainly there is a real scientific element uh, to what we're doing. Um, and so just talking about that, um, you know, we are we are a, 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 a grassroots explorer. Uh, we have a technological approach. We have something which we call Predictor. It did it did uh, so the genesis of it came out of this thing which was called the Predictive Mineral Discovery Cooperative Research Center, from which Pre Predictive derives its name. And so it's very much about um, getting together all of the available geoscientific data for a region, um, and in this case progressively countries across the Bremian, starting in Burkina Faso, going to Cote d'Ivoire, going to Mali, going to Guinea. Um, and out of that, identifying targets and then taking uh, advantage of opportunities, particularly laterally uh, vacant ground opportunities and picking up ground um, and going to work on that. So initially we did more deals. Now we're very much in the business of picking up ground in our own right. So, so, um, so there is a, a scientific basis to it. Um, and we are very much interested in identifying areas that have characteristics that we think from the regional data with a high propensity for gold mineralization. And we found a lot of gold mineralization along the way using that approach. And of course, Kininko is the latest and greatest, but it is certainly yeah. the greatest. 
um, um, but it, it, it emerges from having a lot of goes in a lot of areas using this kind of approach. So the other thing, of course, is why the Brimian? Well, one thing about yeah. the Brimian is, even if you have a look on the map, um, it's sometimes hard to appreciate just how huge it is. So from, from Senegal, from Sabadala in Senegal, down to Abwasi, you're talking about a distance of maybe 1,500 kilometers. And within that, and that's, and that's that, that stretch of Brimian, it's got green stones all the way through it, different green stones belt, nearly all of them have got gold deposits in them. So it's incredibly prolifically mineralized. It's not one single belt. It's not like the Eastern gold fields in, in Australia. It's something very different from that. Um, and of course, it's an area that's just had much less exploration than the mature mature, mature exploration areas like you have in Canada and Australia and so on. So, um, so it has that appeal of being very well mineralized and, and really relatively very underexplored. You know, there's probably 70 plus 1 million ounce uh, deposits in the Brimian. It's hard to find another place on earth which has more exciting opportunity for gold discovery than that. I, I think it's the number one. Obviously yeah, one no. Idea. A absolutely. And also, you know, just touching on uh, something we can all understand is, you know, when you have such a big area that is so prolific, in a way, there would be a lot of ways to win, so to speak. Um, and, uh, you, you know, and then, you know, touching on that, you know, one thing that's interesting and predictive is that you really are a portfolio of companies and maybe the market is not totally appreciating that, in my humble opinion. I I'm just curious about your thoughts about that. Yes, well, it, it, being a portfolio company has actually led us to where we are today. Um, right. And, and obviously, well, not obviously, but the reality is with us, quite a lot of those properties are joint ventured out, um, which means that, that the, our, our expenditure commitments are low. They, they are, they, there are some, um, but what it, what it means is that we just keep on adding into the mix these shots to the title end. And of course, if we find things and we do our first test and it's not interesting, we hand it back. Um, right. So we're turning over ground as well. And, and if you do that, and if you, get, you work with an approach, as I think we do, where, where you identify areas with a high probability of greenfields discovery, and at the same time, uh, you, you uh, keep on turning it over uh, using low cost, a, a low cost approach. So I mean, obviously, we've, we've kept going without spending too much money over, over recent years, and yet remained active well, then you're much more likely to have success. And that is the fundamental of our approach. Right. And, and even though, as you said, you know, there's a lot of hype at the moment. Uh, we'll touch on your share price maybe a little bit later. Uh, but, you know, it's always, you know, frankly, it's under, under, underlying fundamentals that ultimately do drive share price. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot to it. Um, what do you see? In, can you just go through some of your projects um, from a... a I wouldn't call it a layman's terms, if you will, and where do they all sit at the moment? Okay, all right. Well, obviously, we'll start with Kaninko. So yeah. Kaninko is where we've announced this discovery. Um, and here, we, we're at the, at the beginning of, of what looks like a big system, a system with hopefully uh, multiple locations of mineralization. We already know of two. Um, uh, and it's it sits within the Sigiri Basin, which is, in northeastern Guinea, and and a, a well mineralized part of the uh, of um, the Beremian, but also an underexplored part of the Beremian, um, and and specifically uh, we're we're in we're at one edge, but we're at one edge of the Seguri Basin where there's other things going on. So, for example, we have Kurusa, which is the Cassidy project, which is just being sold to Hummingbird, um, and there there's plus one million ounces, so quite good grade. There's Kiniero just 30 kilometers away. Carus is only 10 kilometers away from us, uh, 30 kilometers away. Um, Kiniera was a mine, mine by Semifo, and that's a redevelopment. So there's a lot of mineralization in the area, but we happen to be in an area that we selected using this predictor approach, which had had very, very little previous work and no drilling. So, you know, virgin discovery, uh, very exciting. And what we've got so far, obviously, is we've got broad zones of, of shallow mineralization out of shallow drilling, 
And now we've got a very active drilling program going on right now, and we talked about that earlier in the week, uh, where we've got um, uh, drills turning away, power all got to keep on finding more of this shallow min uh, mineralization, um, uh, reverse circulation to drill this oxide uh, mineralization, particularly and understand the extent of it in the top you know, 60, 70 meters, uh, and then deeper diamond drilling to understand what it is at depth. So all of those things going on, coming out of that. So a very exciting moment for us, and the system is open in all directions. So we're, you know, we're obviously very excited by that. Um, and then more broadly, in Guinea, we have a couple of other properties. Yeah. Did you want to ask a question? Did you want to uh, No, I wanted you to discuss those too, because I mean, to me, there are just so many options, uh, you know, call options on, on the company. So yeah, I want to hear more. Love to. Right, okay. So, so um, about 80 kilometers away, we've got Can Can. So Can Can was, was um, quite close to the city of Cancan, which is one of the largest cities in Guinea. Um, uh, but that target was one of the best targets that we identified out of our whole analysis. So we, we can, conceptually, we're very excited by it. So, excuse me. Um, the, the, excuse me. The joys of Zoom. That's okay. Can't have the phone going off. Um, I was just saying the joys just... of Zoom. <laughs> uh, I'll put that. Uh, uh. Right. Apologies uh, to everybody. Um, okay, so uh, Can Can, we, we have uh, a very good target. Uh, We've had some delays on doing some drilling. We're doing a bit of drilling right now. So we're looking for, for results from that. These are quite uh, strong looking jet chemical anomalies. You know, no, essentially no, no previous uh, mining in the immediate area of these anomalies. So we're, we're certainly looking forward to that. Um, and then Quirion is the other really large property. That's quite large. We've only just started work on that. It's quite, it's, it covers about 300 square kilometers. Uh, it's a good deal. It gives us 100% a, a equity over time. Um, and uh, it's an extremely well mineralized area. So it's, it's only seven kilometers north of one of the, the two trike deposits, which are now being developed uh, by right. Manajem, a, a Moroccan company, uh, and then quite close to the ex-volcanic project, Mandiana. So uh, a lot of opportunity there, very early days, and we'll be drilling that. And then of course, we step out of Guinea, um, yeah. And then we've got a joint venture with Resolute. Uh, there's uh, several uh, properties which are interesting, but two in particular. Uh, there's the Fakesadugu North uh, project, uh, within which we have the Waragi South uh, deposit or the Waragi South discovery. We announced some drilling from that on the 16th of April from Resolute Diamond Drilling Results. And we got some, some nice intercepts up to 50 metre widths. Um, we, we now know that this body extends to nearly 200 meters of depth. Um, but what's interesting about that and exciting about it is that it's in the context of 17 kilometer long zone of anomalies, um, where more of this kind of granite hosted mineralization that we see at Waragi South could be found. So there's a lot more work to be doing there. And we're looking forward uh, to Resolute who's operating. Resolute, by the way, is an Australian mining company, which uh, yeah. has a large mine, large mines in West Africa. Um, and then Bundiali, where we, we've got work going on now, where we made a discover earlier, the initial drill results were in 2016. Some very high grade hits from there and, and uh, explored really by drilling only over two kilometers. The next four kilometers to the north now is being hit with uh, power auger and air core drilling. So we're looking forward to results from that. Um, and then beyond that, and there are other bits and pieces in Cote d'Ivoire, we have a portfolio in, in Burkina Faso. That's in joint venture with a Canadian company called Montage. Um, and right now, there's not very much work going on that, but that, a discovery has been made there. We made a discovery there called uh, Bongu. Not too large, a couple of hundred thousand ounces, good grade, very nice metallurgy, open pitable, um, uh, uh, surrounded by an exploration target of about half a million ounces. So quite a significant project. Um, and, and right now it's a little bit difficult to work there because of some security concerns, but certainly there's potential to find something quite significant there as well. So a lot in the portfolio. Yeah, no, and that's what I, um, I, I think that the market, even you know, after the share price, which we'll touch on in a second, is potentially missing is that there are still a lot of ways to win. Uh, but then, you know, as I said, you know, we can't ignore your share price, which has just been incredible. Um, what are your thoughts about the, this meteoric rise? Um, I'm just curious to hear from, from the MD himself. 
Right. Okay. Well, the first thing is, of course, that we were operating from a very low base. Yeah. And so what that what that says well, so what that says is that despite the fact that we had this large portfolio bursting with with opportunity, people simply didn't rate it. And and what's quite interesting is uh, that as we got close to the to the point that the market recognises discovery, which was those air core holes, we were getting some very interesting indications out of Kininko that the market simply didn't give any credence to. So we, we did this power auger. We now know power auger is the method that we need uh, to find more of this stuff. Um, we, do, we, we had 18 holes, which we announced in February, um, right. uh, within, all within this, this quite uh, broad, apparently continuous footprint, covering 13 hectares, open to the north and south, average value of one and a half gram from from well in the saprolite, so well on the deeply weathered rock from you know between 10 and 20 meters depth um now, it, had that been a different kind of drilling maybe would have people would have uh, sat up and took notice but they said oh well it's a power organ not very interesting and then we we did some bottom hole samples which were, it, we got even high grades out of up to 12 grams and still nobody paid attention and then we put out the air core mm -hmm. and 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 the market paid attention to that. So I think that that's one element. The second is that we had wind in our sails. And that's that's because obviously the gold price has been climbing, uh, particularly after the first jitters uh, in March uh, from COVID-19. Then obviously the uh, gold price is on, on a very strong trend. And then thirdly, we're in Australia. And Australia, uh, the market, it's always been a little bit different, uh, the ASX, from some other markets. Um, and right now, the, the investors are very attuned to new discovery. And of course, our news came out on the same day as this new chalice discovery near Perth, this new, new medical discovery. De Grey has been shooting the lights out with its results. And so people are very excited about De Grey. Um, right. And you've got Legend also on Nickel. And, and so and, and we're seeing, so wherever we're seeing good, good uh, gold results um, emerge into this market people get excited and so I think that that's true and then perhaps the additional thing that excited people about our discovery um, was I mean who thinks about Guinea so something's come out of a right. place that people don't even think about um, and not only can you see see this there's, you know the headline number of course was the 46 meters of 6.6 .6 grams um, open at depth but just the width that uh, you know we just turned up this this thing which nobody had heard of which was you know 150 meters wide and maybe wider uh, because it was open in all directions so i think that that's that that combination of factors that really that um, have really benefited us starting from a low base going up to evaluation that you know i think that we can fairly say is appropriate um, for the for the scale of the opportunity that that we're presenting to the market absolutely and you know and then also i suppose you know touching on you know, it's all well and good to have exploration targets, but you need the capital to do it with. Um, you've done, you know, you've raised capital, you know, recently and smartly. Can you just touch on your capital position and are you comfortable with it at the moment, considering the, you know, potential opportunities that are out there for you, frankly? Yeah, so um, we're, we're actually a, a week away from complete finalization of the financing, and the financing has two components. So uh, part of that is, is uh, the larger part of it is private placement. And that's right. from Australian and overseas investment investors, both, both institutional investors and high net worths. And that was for 6.9 million Aussie. Um, and then we've, we uh, just closed on Tuesday, a, um, a, what we call an entitlement issue or rights issue. And that's for another 2.1. Um, and so barring any, remarkable hiccup, and I don't think there's any likelihood of that now, uh, we should have 9 million uh, additional dollars in Treasury um, uh, in the next few days, or certainly in the next week, um, and those shares issued. So that, that will result, that will um, come from the issue of 180 million new shares. We will then have uh, a little over 800 million shares on issue. Um, in terms of Am I happy with the cash position? Well, we do have a lot of work to do, as you say, but, but yeah. it certainly is sufficient for us to, to, to do a very serious drilling program on Kaninko. Um, and obviously, we're, we're in the first uh, throes of doing that. And that's something that, that um, subject to results, as always, should accelerate uh, uh, during the remainder of this year. Right now, we've got uh, a 
uh, well, actually at this moment, we have two RC rigs on Kaninka, one diamond drill rig, um, but that, uh, that RC rig is borrowed from CanCan. We'll go back to CanCan in, in, in another few days. Um, and, uh, and, those, and then we've got a couple of power auger rigs. So the diamond drill and, and, and the RC rig, we think that can drill at least on single shift through the rainy season. So the rainy season okay. is more or less upon us. I mean, we're having good days and rainy days, but it accelerates from June through uh, into, and, and continues all, through, all the way until through to September, October. But because of our location on Northeast Bank, and we think we should be able to continue drilling um, at a rate uh, through there. Um, and then after that, an acceleration um, thereafter. Once we've got an idea of the scale of the beast that we're looking at and what it is. So we don't want to go too fast, too early, because we just waste drilling meters. Uh, we want to we want to understand it, and that's what this this program is going to do. So, in terms of cash needs, obviously we have enough cash to do those things. Right. I think we've got enough uh, enough cash to do a, a pretty big drill out, um, and uh, take us through to resource calculation. Uh, hopefully, by the middle of next year. That's certainly that we're we're uh, intending to have uh, a maiden resource out by the middle of next year. Um, so, I think that we're in quite a good position. We, we've got some money uh, set aside to do some metallurgical text work once we're at that point. Um, we're not quite at that point yet, uh, but once we've got more understanding of, of the ore deposit and some money to enable us not to neglect entirely everything else. So we're not, we're not uh, giving up on a, a, the, the other Guinea properties, but obviously right. they get uh, less of the money. And then there is, uh, uh, we are currently contributing to the, uh, the joint venture with Resolute, 23.5% uh, of the budget. So those kinds of things will be some call on our cash, but the bulk of it will go into Kaninka. We're well funded for that. Right, and, and so, and is it fair to say from like a, a news flow announcement, we should, obviously it sounds like, you know, the, the, you know, the resource announcement in mid next year is probably the big one, but there's some news along the way between kind of like Q4, you know, calendar Q4 and into Q1, some more results should come out, would you say? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, they'll, they'll be progressively drilling results coming out. There's right. a um, big batch of samples uh, heading to the laboratory in the next few days. Um, and so we'll be looking forward to those and we'll release results progressively. We're not going to release, you know, one, two holes at a time. We'll put them yeah. out in budget batches, um, but, but, and there'll be news from Power Orbit, there'll be news from the RC, there'll be news from, from uh, uh, the diamond drilling, and of course there'll be news from other properties as well. So, yeah. Well, fantastic, Paul. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your story and a bit about West Africa and then also obviously about your portfolio of companies. Uh, we really appreciate your time. It's really great to see that, you know, you're finally getting probably the, uh, I, I suppose, the respect that you deserve. I don't know if that's the right description of it or not. But Paul, thank you very much for joining us and appreciate your time. Thank you too, Greg. It's been a pleasure.